Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Anthony Joshua should sack Rob McCracken. He needs a new team. I think that Rob McCracken in the corner has run its course. I thought that two years ago after Ruiz loss. And I always felt that it might take another loss not too in the not too distant future for AJ really to have a look and assess it and say, Do you know what, maybe I need to move on. I think that when I look at Anthony Joshua, I look at we'll say like a 2017 Anthony Joshua, who was definitely not the finished article at the time. And he was probably about there in terms of where I believe he his ultimate performance as a fighter is. He was maybe say there. Now you would expect in four years he would have gone to there. But from what I've seen, he's only gone about to there in terms of progression, in terms of his ability. I think there's a lot of ability in Anthony Joshua that he's not tapped into. And I just don't think that Rob McCracken and the environment he's in is really beneficial to him. And I don't think it's bringing out the best in him. Having said that, look... I fully believe if AJ had had Eddie Futch, Emmanuel Stewart, Freddie Roach, etc., etc., in his corner on Saturday night, he probably still would have lost. I think Alexander Rusek stylistically is always going to be a problem for Anthony Joshua. And I think no matter what AJ does in terms of even if he really tries to put it on him, you know, Klitschko style or Dylan White style, I still think that that has a lot of issues. Like, that is a seriously high risk strategy. Seriously high risk. He could gas. Or it could get clipped. It's extremely, extremely high risk. So you wanna you wanna worry about that for AJ. But I go back to trainers. <sighs> AJ seems to be one of these guys who's very loyal to his team. You know, it's like he has the mentality of it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's also a saying that if it ain't perfect, keep working on it. And I believe that that's what we need to get into AJ. That changes need to happen in his team. You know, he needs to really look at the team around him now he's brought in guys like Angel Fernandez who have been very good but I was really surprised we didn't see more of his input in the Alexander Usek fight because I said before uh, I think I said on one of Hatman's videos that AJ would have been training longer with Fernandez for this fight than he would have been with McCracken because McCracken would have been at the Olympics but what we saw on Saturday night that was all Rob McCracken that was all Rob McCracken his style the way he holds his hands his movement his stiffness I mean jeez us that really, that, that's something that's been a common complaint we've had about AJ is stiffness. That's still prevalent. You know, it's still prevalent in him. And I think that when you look at that, you just think he needs to change it up. To give himself the best chance of winning, he needs to change it up. If I look at Anthony Joshua, I look at his dimensions. I look at trainers who I think might do very good work. If we're talking about, if he wanted to keep it in the UK, because let's just... We'll expand to the US now in a sec, but we'll keep it in the UK for the time being because I assume AJ will probably want to keep it close to home, which is, you know, that's his choice. If we're looking at the UK, a trainer who, in my opinion, would be so... Well, there's two, but one of them is just not going to happen. The other one is Shane McGuigan. I think you know who the first one is, Peter Fury. Shane McGuigan, at the start of his career, there was a lot of skepticism about him. People kind of thought bit like Ben Davison, actually, in a way. And Ben Davison, as well, isn't too bad of a shout. But there was a bit of skepticism about Shane McGuigan. But he's definitely shown to me that he is a very, very good boxing coach. And look at what he's done to AJ's protege, Lawrence O'Colley. You know, I, if I was Anthony Joshua, I would look at what Shane McGuigan has done to Lawrence O'Colley and how he's able to bring more out of his game. And bear in mind, Lawrence O'Colley is still not the finished article. There's still more to come with him. But already, me personally, from what I've seen, I've been massively impressed with the, with the improvements to Lawrence O'Colley. Compared to how he was a couple of years ago when he stumped the joint out against Chamberlain and, you know, Matt Yaskin, to where he is now, it's night and day. It really, truly is. I even remember um, O'Colley struggling a bit with Blaze Mendu, a journeyman, in one of his early fights. And, you know, really looking horrible in that fight. And I was thinking, this, this kid's going nowhere. You know, he's going to get knocked out sooner or later. And what I see him do with McGuigan now... I just think McGuigan could do that to Anthony Joshua. You know, he could take Anthony Joshua. Shane McGuigan, I don't know if their personalities might hit it off. I think Shane McGuigan is very kind of matter-of-fact kind of guy. I don't know how AJ would be with that. But in terms of styles, I think that would be brilliant for AJ. Again, Ben Davison as well. You know, people criticize Ben Davison. I get that. But he's shown to me to be a very good trainer, have a very good understanding of the game. 
and I think he'd take one look at Anthony Joshua and think, right, we need to change a lot of things and we're going to get them changed. So Ben Davidson would be another good show. But personally, I feel for me, if you're talking about UK trainers, the best will be Peter Fury. Peter Fury's always spoken very highly of Anthony Joshua, you know, in terms of what he thinks, you know, he can do. And, you know, Peter Fury, I get the impression he would love to get his hands on, not Anthony Joshua directly, but a fighter of his dimensions. Because obviously he knows it ain't going to work if he's training Anthony Joshua because of the relationship with his co- with his um, nephew Tyson. I know they're not as close now as they used to be, but there's always chances to build them bridges. If you go and train like your number one rival, Anthony Joshua, that bridge is going to be well and truly burnt. So Peter Fury would be my number one pick, for, but I'm, I'm realistic. I know it's not going to happen. I just know that's not going to happen. If you're looking at American trainers, oh boy, the list, the list goes on. Um, you know, some people criticize Virgil Hunter, but I think he's actually quite a good trainer. The work, the way Tony Yoke has been looking on the Virgil Hunter, I like. Virgil Hunter, has he worked with that many heavyweights? Not really. I would maybe... Res- Virgil Hunter definitely would definitely get AJ looking a lot more fluid, certainly. It would teach him how to work. Virgil Hunter would teach AJ how to work better on the inside, which is something that Anthony Joshua does need to do in the Alexander Usyk rematch, if in fact he takes that. Because working on the inside... It's something that Joshua, certainly in the USEC fight, just look lost. The lost at sea. Virgil Hunter teaches that. Ronnie Shields down in Texas. Excellent, excellent trainer. Ares Landy Lara, Charlos, Mike Tyson. You know, briefly towards the end of Mike Tyson's career, he was training Mike Tyson. Ronnie Shields is one of them trainers who doesn't get the credit he deserves. He doesn't get enough people talking about him. He's, I think he's an excellent coach. I think that he has a great you know, understanding of the game. As well as Ronnie Shields, actually, I was going to say John David Jackson. He's been pretty much out in the wilderness since the Kovalev loss. He was training Brian Jennings briefly for a time. And again, John David Jackson, another very, very good coach that people aren't talking about. I, 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 kinda, I could go on and on about the American coaches, but I just feel as though AJ would probably stick in the UK, so I'm focusing more on them. And I think those coaches would be very, would be very I should say, beneficial for Anthony Joshua moving forward. If he keeps Rob McCracken... I don't know. I, I, I'm not. I, I, this isn't like the Ruiz loss where I picked him straight away to beat Ruiz in the rematch. This is different. This is altogether different. And I, e- even if he changed, ugh, I think if he wants to give himself his best chance, he needs a new team. If he goes in with Rob McCracken, because they're already talking about, or I'm hearing talk about, you know, AJ, you know, putting weight back on. I think that if he goes and puts weight back on and says Rob McCracken. It's not a case of will he win the fight. It's a case of will he, will he get stopped. Will he or won't he get stopped? Because he's not going to win. He, AJ needs to stay where he is now in terms of weight. Not go up in weight. That, no. Imagine AJ. The, imagine, put it like this. Imagine the AJ who fought Takam in there against Usyk. That AJ would have got stopped. I'm telling you now. That AJ would have got stopped. We need a light AJ. He needs to get rid of the stiffness and learn how to work a bit on the inside because his actual short punches are quite good. I've said that before. AJ and Rob McCracken, I, I just don't... There are a lot of fighters who stay with one coach their whole career, like Andre Ward. His style fit perfectly with Virgil Hunter and they were very close as well. I think they were um, I think they were godparents, weren't they? Or something like that. They were very close. That style fitted perfectly. But there are other people who could work with Virgil Hunter and it just wouldn't work out. You know, it goes like that. It's like that. You know, look at Miguel Cotto. He worked with Manny Stewart briefly for a time. And it was really when he worked with Freddie Roach, he looked a good bit better. Probably because Manny Stewart is more a right-hand heavy kind of guy and Cotto was relying on the left hook. You know, there's so many examples. I just think that if you don't see improvements with a trainer, you know, after a, pro- a prolonged period of time, you're with the wrong trainer, you need to move it on. You know, I wonder is it, does AJ feel like he owes Rob McCracken something? Because maybe, maybe he does. Maybe he feels like, you know what, this guy brought me, you know, through the Team GBs, brought me to this point. I owe him this. The thing I would say to AJ is, you get one career. You get a finite window where you have your peak years. Rob McCracken is always going to have a career. He's always going to have fighters through Team GB, guys who turn over, etc, etc. You have one career. Make the most of it. Make the most of your ability. That's what I got to say on that. So I hope you enjoy. I'm going to leave it there. Let me know your suggestions in the comment section who you would like to see AJ be paired with if, in fact, he does 
leave Rob McCracken as I feel he should. Let me know in the comment section. I'd be interested to know if he's good, lads. And lastly, smash the like button. I will hopefully get you some videos out later on Thursday, possibly Friday. Watch the space. That's what I will say. But um, for now, I hope you have a great day. Hope you liked the video. Peace.